Hi everyone and welcome back. Now let's see the demo of uh, access token and the refresh token. There were some small issues. Uh, I replaced the argon 2 with the decrypt version only. So I will talk about the whole flow again. We are using these two separate separate uh, token secrets. Those are in the ENV. Okay and then from the simple login we are generating two different tokens. Access token and the refresh token. Okay. And we are returning it and then once you have it what we are doing is we are also updating the user record here you can see update refresh token that means we are storing the refresh token in the user record which is calling the user service and what it is doing is it is first creating the bcrypt version of it hash version of it and then saving it in the database that is the one part of it like when you click on login what happens is let's say if I do login it always creates two different tokens access token and the refresh token and that is getting rendered and the refresh token is getting saved the hash version of the refresh token is getting saved in the database also now there are these are two strategies I have this JWT and we need to name it because we are using two different strategy and the same strategy you have to pass here JWT refresh and this is JWT now while sending it because there are two different routes we have inside the controller auth controller we have logout which will just simply do logout and return null the refresh token will just uh, refresh I mean it will validate if refresh token is valid then it will return the access token and the refresh token and also update the, the latest refresh token in the user record so for that we are using refresh GWT strategy now here I did one mistake we also need to override the refresh token whatever you are passing in the headers but not what 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 is the store whatever is stored inside a database because inside database we are creating the hash version of it and then storing it because here I am just passing whatever we are getting in the request and we are overriding it and then uh, you can see here this JWT this particular controller here we are passing the refresh token with the user object and this X the refresh token is the token which we got in the headers not from the user table so obviously we can compare it now so here uh, first we got the email we get the user data if user found then we are doing bcrypt compare the refresh token we have in the request object request.headers coming from client and the the request uh, refresh token which is in the database because this is the hash version and this is the plain original string obviously it will be match and we will get uh, if it is match we will just create a new token and will return it and the latest refresh token we will update in the database so this is the whole end-to-end -end cycle and how it works is you copy this refresh token here because with the help of refresh token which has a seven days of expiry you can call this uh, refresh API and it will give you the new refresh token let's say if I try to do the logout with this uh, what we are doing is let's say the logout will get unauthorized right because I'm using I have to use access token for the logout not the refresh token but for the refresh API it works we get the new refresh tokens and if I try the access token for the logout then I need to replace it here now it is using access token auth logout and it has logged out and we can also check in the database if it has uh, logout that means our refresh token should have been null so I can show that you can see my refresh token is empty right now now I will do the login again and re re refresh it I got the refresh token right this is how it works and when you change it the refresh token will change again you need to click login and you reload it you will get a new value right so this is end to end uh, simple authentication the purely authentication service now we are going to add authorization here also let's say we have the users this is for the sign up but there may be a get API which is going to return you all the users so this is a user controller 
uh this is http get user this is create user okay let me see host user and this should be search find user we already have this a uh, controller already i think this is not exposed find user by property this is http get if i refresh it i should be able to see that endpoint here search but it should be a get not post and there is a criteria right in the body i'm sending it it can be passed as a props also so if you are passing things like this you will to execute what happened let's see what we are doing here i mean i didn't test this api this is get search find user in the body we are passing some payload and then okay i'm printing this and then find user by payload this should be a simple query then this is the request body okay try it out not okay sorry i'm passing it as a get get doesn't have a body what a stupid thing i'm doing let's keep it as a post or we can just pass them as a query parameter also it's not a right way of doing it in the post i'm passing payload post is only for creating the resource so we can change it to the get okay and instead of body i can use parents and param find user dto i mean there are different ways of uh, accessing a property now if i reload it i will see something like this right so i'm passing these properties it's showing empty let's see if i'm passing demo now you can also check you can also enable the logger in the database uh, what uh, log query what query it is trying to hit logging true search okay so you can see it is trying to do an or operation i guess first name like this first name like this and what do we have in the database demo at the gmail.com and these are optional parameters not required okay required not provide so first of all let's fix this dto find user dto required true required i mean all are required false an example let's keep them empty this is name first name last name same will be reflected here now these are optional right demo at the rate gmail.com so the query is like this because we are passing undefined that's the problem okay find user by property so here we need to add the options only if you are passing name email first name last name if you are not passing it then do not do it in the or query okay so name email the query is like this it's not returning a result set if i'm using demo at the rate gmail.com so let's see our database it has email demo at the rate gmail.com and this is or operation we can see email like this what if i just add demo okay let's see this is the users await this dot user report dot find which should give me the user entities where name equal to like this what it can be email email first name last name do we have first name last name properties okay those are name so if i'm passing simply name now i need to log all these things 
console.logdata or we already have a logger this dot user report dot find find all many options where this equal to this okay i mean i will talk about this search but what my whole objective here is how we can protect this find user api because this is if somebody has access to this api they would be able to fetch the data even i mean all the data right if i don't pass in the name or there is another api which is giving us all the users that is also in the user controller it's a simple get users and it's uh, the api is get all users we don't have params i mean it doesn't take any argument okay users and we can see users and the few more changes we have to do in the entity user entity we have to make this password selectable false so that this won't come in the queries if i hit this yeah and the refresh token also we can set uh, select false this is fine i think we don't need it anywhere yeah this is fine now this api let's say this is working we will check about it i want to protect it so i need to add a authorization on my endpoints right so what i will do is on this user controller i will create a auth guard right so auth, what is auth guard actually auth guard is just a simple role guard which i can create here which is let's say the role guard what the role guard will do role guard will just uh, check if we are passing the correct role to access that so here is a simple method promise boolean and we are going to have a roles define in our apis okay what all different roles we have right so based on that role only we will check if this user has access to that or not so what we will do is export enum let's say we have a couple of roles i'm just doing a system admin for now and only system admin has access to this particular root apis system user will create more roles also the role guard what this role guard will do is it has activate method and based on this role guard we can decide if this user has access to this particular api or not for that we have to create a decorator a role guard decorator uh, and we have this set of role so role decorator means i want to put something here inside a controller let's say add roles and i will pass this array i just pass the different set of roles and uh, if i'm passing it then this role decorator will enable this api to allow for those set of roles right so for that i will create a inside core or now let's create a decorator here role what this role decorator will do is export so this is a custom decorator you can also create in nest.js role allowed this decorator i will put at the controller level for each and every route this role is of type role it's an array of all the roles that we are passing and here is select metadata select metadata this role is actually coming from enum set metadata okay we have to set metadata so that we can access this metadata property in the auth guard we have we are setting this property roles and we are setting the role so what is the, this decorator does decorator will do nothing we will use the decorator at the controller level this roles allowed 
and here i can say is roles dot system admin right that means now this value i need to somehow pass to my auth guard okay this system admin so i just created a custom decorator and i set this value in the roles decorator roles property of metadata and this metadata you can access in auth guard in interceptor in the middleware anywhere so this is the metadata you have set so we will write a auth guard inside auth guard we can access this so how we can access this i mean i just read this through the documentation how to access the metadata this dot reflector we have reflector from get all and merge so get all and merge this is of type what the roles array and which property we are trying to merge the roles and this is context dot get class context dot get handler if you got this otherwise initialize to empty array if it is not set so if roles are there then it's good then you have to check the roles dot length if it is equal equal to zero then the return true i mean you might have forgot to pass the row let's say if you put a decorator just empty at the controller just empty that means we are going to allow it for everyone we are not uh, stopping anyone or you just explicitly specify roles in that case if the role length is zero return true means allow user to navigate to that route otherwise first we will access the request object First, we'll access the request object through context context dot switch to http and here get a request you got the request from there you can get the roles or user object so from here i will get the the user user has a permission so in the token we are setting the permission or it's a permissions let me just see it's a permission it's a string so here what we will do is we have we will write as role and user mm, dot role because user dot role user dot permissions this is actually a string we can convert that into an array let's say this is just a string as role and in the string we will just check user dot permissions uh, it's a single permission or it can be an array i mean maybe a comma separated so what we will do is we will split that with the comma separated it can be a system admin restaurant admin and all so we got an array then we will just uh, run as sum means whatever the role you are passing that should present inside these permissions so that we can allow role which is of type string so here we can just check role dot find uh, because this is uh, a single role it's a roles because here we got all the roles dot find i equal to i equal equal to role so what this code will do this code is just checking that whatever the role you are passing from the controller is that present in the request permissions or not if yes we are good then you can just return true or false if you have everything user dot permissions is there and then returning true that means user has a permission whatever you are asking or whatever you put at the controller like system admin right uh, let's put it at the user controller i put here i want to allow only a system route only to this api system admin and for that because currently we don't have any 
x system to assign the role i will just put the system admin here it's a string it can be a comma separated string system admin or admin or something like that now we will debug this thing how it is working role allowed system admin system admin or yeah for now let's keep it as null and then we will debug it we will reset and we will check if it is working it is set to null and if i execute i'm getting null if i do the login demo what is happening data and hash argument required did i change anything in the login i mean login was working so this was the post create user and this is user service create token okay let's start the application npm run start dev <coughs> If I try to access this API right now, I'm allowed, right? And it is working. So here at the controller level, we also need to use auth guard, role guard, because this is only this is the one part of it. Here we can add use guard, authentication access guard, and the another guard we are using is. The role guard so because there are two guards at this controller level let's add that out here at the user's api i will just get confused user controller okay here we don't have anything use guards role guard okay So the, this annotation is also required, otherwise how would this guard will come into the picture? This annotation is only putting things in the metadata. Now internal server error, need to fix it. Cannot read properties of undefined reading permissions. Okay, user is not coming. Uh, yes, we go to auth guard. So here request dot permissions user dot permission is coming null because that is not being set through the token. Let's check this uh, access JWT token. Here also we will just put for now console dot log. Okay, yeah, I got this because user doesn't have permissions, right? So if user doesn't have permission, we cannot access it. Uh, that we are doing wrong here. This we need to do if user has the permission, right? So let's say if user doesn't have permission, just put this. So has role will return false. Okay, because user dot permission is null, and you are trying to split, and then okay, it's uh, totally wrong. You are trying to access something that is role guard twenty two user dot permission so here i can say something like this if user dot permissions is null return false uh, so maybe return just false should work why it is trying to access and defined recently first of all user is there that is strange uh, console.log 
user maybe user is altogether coming null from this user is coming undefined that means our token is has expired but if token is expired the refresh token this access token guard should give us uh, access token strategy okay i got it because uh, we need to use this auth guard also gwt guard because without this it won't put user object in the request object right which we were not putting here in the user controller first of all auth card and then because currently these are like open public apis yes unauthorized now that makes sense maybe our token has expired so first we need to fix this login api not sign up or login it was complaining internal server error let's fix it so it's all debugging it's for data and hash argument required that is coming from where auth service dot ts 34 password and user dot password validate user by password compare password wait are we saying that this compare password doesn't is not getting the password value okay yeah now i got it so what i did is i did one mistake in the entity i make this selectable false this password value so whenever i'm doing query this is not coming in get user by id or get user by email okay that is the mistake i did and that's why i mean if the password is not coming the bcrypt will not compare right so now access token is there i can use the access token to access this apis authorize it users forbidden resource okay and user search that is also forbidden resource now let's see because the permissions we got is null so first of all let's set the permissions whatever the permissions we have because we don't have permission we have to set system admin i will just save it and then i will just do the login again because my permissions i are not in the payload in the token so I will auth login, decode, and you get the access token. And you just check your access token also using gwt.io, whatever is inside this payload. You can see I have a permission system admin. So we should be good now. And that is updated here. Let's see the APIs. I got the access token. I will update the access token in here just to the logout and then I try to use the users API internal server error as role is not a function okay it's we understood this thing we can fix it as role okay as role is not a function yes it's not a function as role okay we can just make it a simple arrow function because it is returning and we can call it yes we got it finally okay so that's the end goal of this video sorry for some small issues but now this api and this api was not protected now you can access the data right it is throwing it is also returning the data it is also returning the data and this is all about role based authorization at the application level and the, the mistake we were done we were doing is at the user controller obviously we need a token guard otherwise without this token guard it won't put first of all it won't validate the token 
So access token guard should be for all, for all the protected APIs. First of all, access token guard should be there. Then the role guard because access token guard is checking. You have a token in the authorization header, the valid token. It will put the user object in the request and the role guard will check the permissions in the token. If the, you have a system admin role in the token, obviously I will allow you to access this API. That's all. So this here I will finish the auth service and couple of more endpoints I will add that is like adding the permissions. And if there is a system admin, I will bootstrap and then uh, you will create a restaurant manager or restaurant admin. So you are creating a simple user, but you have to assign a role from the system admin user. System admin user will assign the role so that they can further create the users in the system. That's all guys. Uh, thanks everyone. I will push the code so you can just take a look.